You can get your Halloween figures at Big Bad Toy Store, the link in the description down below. Pokemon, Kaiju, Dragon Ball, and more. It's Steven's Toy Reviews. Hey, hello there, collectors. It's Steven here, and I'm hot off the heels of my Halloween 2018 Michael Myers review. And what better way to keep that steam going than with a review of NECA's Ultimate Lori Strode? That's right, we had an updated Michael Myers, so of course we have to get an updated Lori. And you know what? In NECA's fashion, if they're going to go balls to the wall, they're going to do Michael. Once they get the license, then they're going to do Lori. Now, with that being said, well, I don't know. There were some questionable issues with their Ripley figures, so is that going to cross over to Lori, or is this going to be a de facto SH figure arts, an import figure? Yeah, you might be surprised. Let's take a look to see whether or not Lori is worth adding into your collection. One thing I will give props to NECA for on this one is that they actually made their first attempt at using digital printing to recreate Lori's face from how she specifically appeared in the movie. That's right, if you take a super up close look, you can actually see some dot matrix printing because they somehow managed to get a scan of Jamie Lee Curtis's face and they were able to put it on this figure. Really cool. That's something that we're seeing Hasbro do. That's something we're seeing Tamashi Nations do. And now that NECA is doing it, well, uh, awesome. We're going to actually see a bit better likeness in some characters, and we're not going to be seeing Bishop with super thick guy liner in the future. Okay? Okay. Now, that being said, Lori does have a couple of small shortcomings here and there. I've seen a couple with a, a few paint blobs here and there, but you know what? Lori looks just fine. The only main issue in the looks department is actually going to come in the accessories, and uh, we'll talk about that in a bit. So, for the face, obviously, like I said, she looks great. The only sort of issue I guess I would have here is that from the prototype, it looks perfect, but when it goes into the recasting and the molding and all of that fun stuff, we are going to get some smoothing out of details, so it doesn't look exactly one to one of the prototype, which I would have loved, but eh, hey, you know what? It still does look super fine here. The details on the jacket look fantastic with just perfectly fine masked silver paint for the different buttons and the zippers and so forth, and the undershirt actually looks great as well. We have fantastic detailing in the jeans, which really there's no issues to report there, and the shoes look just fine. Now, this is actually a legitimate criticism I have of recent NECA figures. This goes to their Ash Williams, this goes to their Guillermo del Toro. Pretty much any human figure that they're going to make, for whatever reason, they are casting the plastic in one color, and then they're painting over it. But not only are they doing that, they're not really cleaning up the actual finished product. So, we have all of these flash marks, mold lines, and uh, that paint, because it's on a movable part, they actually paint the joint. Uh, it, well, first and foremost, they're painting over something that doesn't look that great, and since they're painting over a joint, it's flaking. So, Lori's hands don't look all that fun. And as you're going to see in the accessory section, when you keep swapping them, yeah, they're going to look not even gooder. So, overall, for looks, Lori is spot on, just fine, with a couple of minor drawbacks. Lori's articulation is good. All right, next section. No, okay, seriously. So, the articulation is really good. The only issue is that she's got a lot of hair. So, for the neck joint, eh, it's it's kind of okay. But other than that, um, I dare say import levels of awesome. So, what do we have? Well, the head plugs into the neck on a peg, and that peg plugs into the neck on a ball joint. So, Lori can look and twist and turn in all sorts of different directions. Um, can't really look up that far, which is... Uh, eh. You know, not great, but we can fix that with a nice ab crunch and waist joint, which we'll talk about in a second. She can T-pose on you because she does have swivels where the shoulders plug in and hinges as well. Double hinge elbows, which is great. And since they are on pegs, they plug into the bicep and the forearm, allowing you for swivels at both points. And then she's going to be using the standard style uh, NECA wrist joints, which are going to be pop this hand off here just like this so they're going to be on pegs so they're going to peg in for a swivel and then they're going to have hinge movement um in and out okay okay so she is going to have an ab crunch which has fantastic movement despite her having that coat which is great it's going to be a ball joint ball jointed waist as well good movement there kicks out on swivels about that far, hinge movement, 
for splits like that, we're going to have thigh swivels, single hinge knees, and I believe we got ball joints here for the ankles. So great movement there. I mean, you can really put her in some action shots, and as you're going to be seeing throughout the reviews uh, for the Halloween figures, uh, yeah, she really can get into some poses where she's holding weapons and whatnot. Um, yeah, her articulation is just great. Um, I just wish they would have improved the hair to allow better head movement, but other than that, Lori Strode is just fan freaking fantastic let me get a better yeah she's she's fantastic great now it's time for accessories and what all does she come with well short sweet and to the point she comes with a shotgun revolver a knife a rifle she comes with an interchangeable head with the glasses on them which may or may not actually have been needed. And then she comes with an alternate right hand part to hold the knife. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at that alternate head part. And uh, that alternate head part just has the glasses on it. Yep, you can actually pull the glasses off if you wanted, and it is a one-to-one -one with the default head sculpt. So you're not missing much here. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the weapons. First and foremost, we're going to take a look at the knife, which does have that alternate hand part that comes along with it, but you don't actually need this hand part. You can just use the default hand part if you should so choose. Now, this knife can actually slide into a sheath on her belt, which is a default there out of the box, but for whatever reason, it's listed as an accessory on the box, so you take it as you will. Now, we do have that revolver. Looks perfectly fine. It is meant to fit into her right hand, yet in some promotional pictures, she's shown holding it in her left hand. Hand. This is achievable, but I wouldn't really do it because it's a rather loose connection. The rifle does have some nice paint apps to it, but do take note that some of the masking isn't necessarily the cleanest on mine, but uh, it's okay. It's a smaller accessory. I guess it's passable. Then we do have the shotgun, which this is going to be pretty much the iconic accessory if we're going to have a gun here. So yeah, it looks just fine. Yep. Plus it's a, it's a shotgun. You can use it for other characters if you want. Now a quick word of warning when you're swapping out all of those guns. The right hand part that is default out of the box has a finger that is meant to pull the trigger. As you keep swapping the parts, you are going to have some paint rub and transfer, so that right hand part is going to start to look a little bleh. This happened to mine just after this review session because literally she has not held any other weapon in that right hand except for the knife when I opened her up out of the box. She's only held the rifle, the shotgun, and the revolver in that right hand for the specific purpose of this review, and you've seen all of the shots she's had for holding those weapons. So if it's only been that limited, <clears throat> not a whole lot of longevity for the pain apps. All right, so that about wraps it up for accessories here. And yeah, she she is kind of light. But to be honest here, one of the biggest feats is just the simple fact that she was made. So maybe we might get another sort of variant down the line. But uh, if you're a fan of Lori, just just maybe hold off a little bit. And maybe we'll get some more accessories in the coming uh, releases if there are going to be any. But if not, NECA, come on, you could have thrown in a couple other things. So if you need some stands or other effect parts, you know I got videos to help you out. Now we're going to go ahead and move on over to a size comparison where she is paired up with Michael because I'm not lazy and just use the same pictures for two reviews. Nope, I just wanted to give you a nice comprehensive size comparison so you know exactly how you're going to build up your horror shelf. So buy now, skip, or wait for a deal. Overall, Lori does look nice. The accessories are all right, but the articulation is what really drives this figure home for me. It really does match up with some higher-end import figures, and uh, I, I just have fun fiddling around with this one. Yep, really good. 27 bucks. nothing more to say aside from the fact that if you're a Halloween fan and you have any reason to think you don't want this, it, it's probably wrong. Okay, admittedly, there is NECA quality control, but um, yeah, even still, it's kind of forgivable for how cool this one is. 
Well, collectors, that brings us to the end of the video today, and I just wanted to take a second to thank you so much for watching. Now, you've heard a lot from me. I'd like to hear a little bit from you. Drop in the comments down below whether or not you liked it, you hated it, or maybe you were somewhere in between. I also want to take an extra second here for a nice, humongous thank you to all the patrons for SDR over the last month who have really helped the channel grow into what it can be today. So to all of you, two big thumbs up. Thank you very much. And now the end card should be popping up, which will give you a few clickable links, like maybe to subscribe or head on over to my Patreon, or some short URLs, like to my social media or to my Teespring store. There's also a video I hand selected for you, so if you want to watch another STR video, I hand selected some good content for you to watch, so definitely check out that video. Thank you again so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.